All right. Okay. So, hello, dears. <laughs> so, welcome to the part two of our lecture, no, on uh, Streptococcus pyogenes serology, no. And for this uh, video, we'll now talk about the laboratory diagnosis of strep bio. All right. Okay. More focusing on the serological tests because again, I S na nisha din na Yes. Move on. Move on. <laughs> All right. So, for lab DX or lab diagnosis, of course, the first method is culture, and this is the gold standard. Okay. The gold standard good for um, so when you say gold standard, it's the reference method. Muni jung siya ang gina prefer, okay? Kaya lumalabas sa mga boards. What is the gold standard for diagnosis? What is the gold standard? Blah blah blah. So when you say gold standard, it's the reference method. Siya good ang gina tuuhan or siya good ang basis parang ganon. Siya good ang pinaka preferred. Yes, like that. So the gold standard good for the diagnosis of S. pyogenes infections is of course culture. Kay culture. Kay bakteria man eh. But it's a bacteria. So and it can be cultured. So the the ano good the gold standard is culture all right the next is of course serological tests or serologic tests now your serological tests can be divided into two categories number one is the detection of the antigens of your strep pyo and usually this is done through enzyme immunoassays or latex agglutination so uh, enzyme immunoassays dito sa komo discuss ana will have a separate lecture on that when we go to labeled immunoassays yes sana all my label <laughs> my pang immunoassays my label yes enzyme immunoassays and your latex agglutination by the name itself it's agglutination that uses latex okay all right so that's a latex is a an, uh, a carrier diba like a particle an artificial particle all right, and the detection of antibodies. All right, so and there are three types of antibodies. You have the ASO, ayan, anti streptolysin O testing, which is what we'll perform in the lab then. All right, and the anti DNA B testing. All right, and lastly is the streptozyme testing. All right, now what we're going to discuss in the next slides are then uh, these three at the focus the antibody testing. All right, now why is this important? Because Usually, serological tests good. We perform that to determine, no, or to check for sequelae. All right, to we, to check if there are streptococcal uh, sequelae, katong either acute glomerulonephritis ba or rheumatic heart fever. Because again, um, during this time, mang good, uh, the pathogen is not anymore found in the system of the body or found in the system of the patient. So culture will be um, will not be remarkable now, or it will not help. Okay, that's why we're, we now turn our attention to serological tests. Okay, because we then determine if na abay reaction ng body, like na abay antibodies na produce, no? na pa bang antigens in a way. Alright, so, and that will help again in determining, no? or identify the sequelae, the post streptococcal sequelae, again, pwedeng rheumatic heart fever or uh, acute glomerulonephritis. Because again, of the reason that the organism, if na na siya sequelae, if na gipang bati ang patient na sequelae, example, na asya like sa like sa pagihi niya na hematuria, alright, so that could be caused by glomerulonephritis. Now, if your doctor wants to know what is the cause of glomerulonephritis, so pwede siya magpa-check for the serological tests to determine if the the glomerulonephritis ba is caused by streptococcus pyogenes. It's is it caused by a past infection by strep pyo, ganun. So. Again, that's why we, we use serological tests because at this time, if we identify or we test now for sequelae or we test the etiology or the origin of the sequelae, like unsay cause nga nung nagka-glomerulonephritis, unsay cause nagka-rheumatic heart fever, at this time, wala na ang pathogen. So, sa culture mismo, wala tayong makita. Alright? So, we now uh, rely on serological tests. Okay? So, that's what we're going to focus now. And usually, if we test... Um, the serum of a patient, example na na ay uh, rheumatic heart fever, acute, so meaning ongoing, all right, and then na ay convalescent. So when you say ni ayun na, when you say convalescent, it, mean, it means na ayun na na serum, no, or basta convalescent na ayun na siya. If there is a fourfold, okay, fourfold increase in the titer, it means significant siya, okay, it means that. It could be that the glomerulonephritis is caused by a past S. pyo infection. So, example, acute, let's say 20 IU per ml, no, pag serial dilution ni mo, ang titer. And then, pag convalescent, pag ayo niya, na mo ng 80, ayan, so that's fourfold. So, that's a significant increase, alright, of the titer. So, that means, yes, uh, <laughs> the glomerulonephritis, alright, or the sequelae is due or can be, can be caused by the past 
espio infection. Ganun. All right, okay, now we go now to the first test. And that is your anti streptolysin O testing, which is again what we also perform in the lab. All right, so by the name itself, we are detecting for uh, streptolysin O, all right, the antigen. Okay, we are detecting the antibody no, in, in your patient to streptolysin O, which is again an antigen or a virulence factor of your S bio. And usually the presence of antibodies to streptolysin O indicates recent streptococcal infection in patients suspected of having rheumatic fever or post-strep glomerulonephritis following a throat infection. Ayan. Okay, all right. And the classic hemolytic method for determining the ASO titer was the first test. So hemolysis, we're looking for hemolysis, ang positive result. And the principle is neutralization of the hemolytic activity of streptolysin O by antibody. So it's neutralization, all right? So that's the first test, no? The principle of the first test is hemolysis, okay? Uh, we're looking for hemolysis rather, ang end result. But the principle is neutralization, all right? And again, as mentioned, presence of ASO, meaning anti streptolysin O, indicates recent uh, pyogenic infection or streptococcal infection following, uh, ano, in patients na naay rheumatic fever or post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Example, you have a patient na ka rheumatic fever siya, so the doctor requests for an ASO, all right? Yan positive man, so, or taas iyahang titer. So it indicates that the rheumatic fever is caused, okay, by a recent streptococcal infection, usually throat uh, infection, okay? All right, ayan. Uh, then this is the principle. Again, procedure uh, patient serum plus the streptolysin O reagent, of course, because again, we're detecting for antibodies, so we incubate. RBCs, reagent, are added as an indicator because, again, we're looking for hemolysis. The bang endpoint, if na ba hemolysis or wala. And if the patient has enough antibody, shuttleizing O will be neutralized, thus, no hemolysis is observed. So, no hemolysis ang positive, and negative is with hemolysis. So, how is that so? So, we'd now look to the illustration. I joke. The titer uh, expressed in TOD units, muna siya yung measurement, guys. TOD units. If ever mangani ang atong gigamit na streptolysin O reagent is the standard daw. All right? If ang imuhang reagent na gigamit is the standard na streptolysin O, all right? But pwede po siyang IU per ml ba yun? IU per ml if WHO na standard atong gigamit na streptolysin O. Okay? But usually we express that in TOD units or TOD units. And again, the titer is the reciprocal of the highest dilution without hemolysis. Okay. So, nga siyang wala hemolysis ang positive. So, ayan. So, we have the reagent, streptolysin O. And then, we add your patient serum, okay, uh, that, that contains the antibody. All right. So, we incubate. So, of course, pag add sa antibody, so, of course, the, if antibody is present, mo react sila together already. Pag add mo sa RBCs, of course, wala na hemolysis. Kaya wala na yung mobind. Alright? <laughs> na antibody sa muhang RBCs. Okay? Alright. And if the antibody is absent, so ang antigen right na, ah, pag add mo sa RBCs, the antigen then uh, creates, okay, or pro, uh, leads to hemolysis. Because again, this is a streptolysin. So it's a hemolysin. Okay? So since wala man na binds antibody dere, okay, kay wala man siya antibody to streptolysin O, alright? Pag add sa RBCs, kay since hemolysin man siya, Wala may antibodies na attach niya, all right? So free rasha, free rasha to react on the RBCs that were added. Muna muhimol, muhimolize, yung ilize ng RBCs, okay? And that indicates negative, negative for the ASO. Wala siya antibody to to streptolysin O, okay? All right, ayan. So I hope na gets lang. So that's neutralization. In a way, ang point sa neutralization, if the patient has an antibody or antibodies to streptolysin O, na neutralize na sa antibodies found in the patient sample ang ASO mismo. Kaya iya hamang na-combine na daan. So, na-neutralize na, meaning, dili na siya ka-effect on RBCs. Dili na siya ka on RBCs ang streptolysin O. Okay? Alright, I hope na-gets lang. And the result, the normal is dapat less than equal to 166 TOD units and moderately elevated if 240 TOD units and 320 TOD units. Katunay siyang tighter na guys ha? Sa pag-serial Dilution ninyo. Okay? Alright. And ASO titers typically increase within 1 to 2 weeks after infection and peak between 3 to 6 weeks 
following the initial symptoms. Okay, so within one to two weeks, pag yun, antibodies man siya, so quite uh, matagal-tagal pa. Alright, okay, so one to two weeks. Ayan. Now, we go now to latex agglutination, so which we will perform then. So, ang principle is passive agglutination. So, what do you mean by passive? The carrier contains the antigens. It was artificially put there, di ba? The carrier doesn't have the antigens naturally, di ba? That's passive. In this case, latex at ang carrier, they are coated with the streptolysin O, which is your antigen. And again, we're looking for your we're looking for your AS or antibodies. Okay, so the positive result, Ajo. The reagents are again latex particles coated with the streptolysin O antigen. Positive control serum with ASO and negative control a serum without ASO. So again, gikan siya tanan sa manufacturer. Okay, all right. So this is included in your testing kit. Okay, so ang, ang principle is of course you're testing for ASO. So you're looking looking for if the patient has ASO in their serum. So pag add sa latex which contains the SLO antigen on the latex, so mo combine sila and of course positive result is agglutination or visible agglutination. Okay. Alright, now we go now to the next test, and that is your anti dna B. Alright. Now recall dna B, DNA is one of the enzymes produced by strep bio. And the banana four types. You have A, B, C, and D. Alright. Um, we now test for B. Okay, dna B. It's useful in patients suspected of having glomerulonephritis preceded by streptococcal skin infections. Because your ASO are not elevated in uh, this type of disease. They are not stimulated. Okay, so Ang ASO usually is a rheumatic fever or throat di ba? infections. But for anti dns B, it's mostly for glomerulonephritis, all right, following skin infections. Because again, your ASO are not stimulated by this type of condition or disease. All right. And also, antibodies to dns B may be detected in patients with acute rheumatic fever, all right, who have a negative ASO test result. So your ASO lang yun is must Ano siya, useful for rheumatic fever, all right? But when it comes to glomerulonephritis, following skin infections, dili siya mo uh, increase or dili siya mo stimulate. Uh, your anti dna B also can be used for rheumatic fever, all right? Um, if you want to confirm, example, negative ang ASO, all right? So, mo test kag anti dna B, they can also be detected with rheumatic, in patients with rheumatic fever. And aside from that, it's highly specific for your group A strep because it's only produced by group A strep, all right, or it's mainly produced by uh, group A strep. Therefore, anti dna B testing is um, highly specific, ayan, for group A streptococcal sequelae. Ayan, so ang anti dna B good, ang very specific nato. All right, okay, ang anti dna B. Because again, of the reason that dna B is mainly produced by your group A strep. Okay, all right. Now we go now to the principle neutralization pa rin <laughs> of the de depolymerizing activity of dna B by antibodies. Okay, so the procedure, patient serum pa rin because again, we're testing for antibodies. The dna B reagent, imo add and then incubate. And then we have a DNA methyl green conjugate, which is an indicator. And if the patient has enough antibody, the dna B will be neutralized. Okay. Alright, kay makombine na siya daan with the antibody found in your patient's serum. And no color change is observed. Ayan. So for the illustration, uh, interpretation day rather, the tubes are graded for color. You grade that zero to colorless to four plus unchanged. And the titer is the highest dilution, reciprocal, of the highest dilution of the patient's serum graded two plus to four plus. Meaning while I change dapat in color. Muna siya ay pasabot na positive siya for the antibody to DNA B. Okay? We'll understand later nga no. Because again, the, the principle is neutralization. Kabantay mo usually if mga neutralization ang, <laughs> ang principle or mga inhibition, ang positive usually ana is the opposite. Meaning, if sa una, di ba, if agglutination lang mismo, ang positive is agglutination. But if na na inhibition, like agglutination inhibition, ang positive na this time is no agglutination. Parang ganun. So, imong gibali. Alright, okay. Ayan. And the result, normal dapat is 240 to 640 units. Uh, children, 2 to 12 years old. And an overnight incubation also at 37 degrees Celsius is required in some testing methodologies to permit the antibodies to inactivate the enzyme. So, para mas taas ang contact time with each other, para mas taas ang time to neutralize or inactivate the enzyme. Okay, so ngano siyang manutralize? Sige, let's see at the uh, testing uh, illustration. 
So ang reagent nimo is DNAs, again, which is your enzyme, which is an antigen. And then you add the patient sample, which is suspected to have the antibody to DNAs B. All right. Now, we incubate, di ba? Again, some methodologies overnight ang pag-incubate at 37 degrees Celsius para mo-react sila, para ma-neutralize sa imuhang antibody found in the patient sample ang imuhang reagent na DNAs. Okay. Now, if the antibody or if the patient really has anti-DNAs B, alright, so of course, mubain na siya. Okay, mubain. Ayan. And pag-add mo sa imuhang DNA methyl green conjugate, so it's a DNA na na-i stain in a way. <laughs> so, gikombine na siya stain. Okay? Para murag as an indicator. So, since kaning DNAs ni mo kaya neutralize na, na bind na by the anti-DNAs B found in your patient sample, so wala na free DNAs B na pwedeng mo depolymerize ani or bungkagon siya. Alright? So, therefore, the color is unchanged. Remain dyan po siya na color green. Kaya wala na may DNAs B na mo bungkag ani nila. Alright? Para mawala ang color unta, no? So, since wala na may DNAs B na mubungkag ani, so maintain good ang color. And that indicates a positive result, which means the patient has anti-DNAs B. Whereas, if the patient doesn't have anti-DNAs B, antibody absent, the DNAs B reagent is free, no? Pwede pa siyang work. So, pag mo sa DNA methyl green conjugate, ayan, iyahang i-depolymerize ang DNA, mawala ang color. Okay, and that indicates a negative result. Meaning, the patient doesn't have anti-DNAs B. Okay, alright. Actually, this is the principle then of your DNAs testing. Diba? The DNAs testing uh, culture medium nimo. Usually, we use for serratia. In your bakte, you have serratia, you have moraxella, pwede rin staphylococcus aureus. Diba? Your SMS. DNAs, diba? I don't know if na chika po sa yung bakte, but DNAs, culture medium ni mo, positive siya for DNAs if na clearing sa medium. Ang color, ang color sa DNAs medium ni mo, culture medium, is green. So the same ani. Kaya na siya DNA methyl green conjugate. Now, if the bacteria releases DNAs, okay, na ay clearing, kaya yung bungkagon, yung bungkagon ang, ang katong methyl green, DNA methyl green conjugate. So, na clearing around the colonies. So, that's positive for DNAs, ang bacteria. Alright? So, chika lang to siya. But again, muna siya, ato ang principles, ato ang serological testing. Okay, alright. So, bakte na siya. Sige. Okay, chika lang. Alright. Ayan. So, okay. So, again, that is the principle for anti-DNAs B testing. I hope na gets lang. Alright? Ayan. And the last test, if you're streptozyme testing. Your streptozyme testing is a slide agglutination test, so agglutination lang Japan. And we're detecting antibodies, a lot of antibodies, to different streptococcal antigens. So you have anti-streptolysin O, anti-streptokinase, anti-DNAs B, anti-NADase, and anti-hyaluronidase. Okay, so we're detecting for those antibodies. Okay? And sheep RBCs, they are coated with the specific antigens, okay? So, nasa SLO, nasa streptokinase, nasa DNAs, okay? So, kanin sila tanan na antigens na asa surface sa sheep RBCs, okay? Because again, we are looking for these antibodies, the gunman, okay? Alright. And reagent sheep RBCs, they are mixed with a 1 is to 100 dilution of the patient serum. So, mag dilute sa kag 1 is to 100. Okay, all right. And usually, this test now is very prone to erroneous results. Uh, this test, if you should perform, dapat na po conjugate or na po kay test na ASO or uh, or anti DNAs B at the same time para um, makabalo ka ba para ma compare compare ni mo siya. Okay, because again, this is prone to a lot of errors now. Okay, all right. Ayan, ayan. And but this test is ninety five percent positive in patients with acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis following uh, pharyngitis. Okay? Ang daming itis, no? So, basta nalibog na mo. 95% daw, ani, uh, 95% is, there are 95% of the patients daw with um, acute glomerulonephritis following uh, pharyngitis caused by strep payo. Moon, positive, ani, 95% daw. Okay, all right. But again, as mentioned, if you should perform, dapat you also perform at the same time either ASO or NADs, uh, anti-DNAs B. Sorry. Okay, all right. So for the principle, it's very no, ano, klaro lang na naman. 
Interpretation is positive, heme agglutination. Because again, we're using RBCs, di ba? But so we use the tag, we use the tag RBCs, buta na to siya heme na prefix. So heme agglutination. And negative is without heme agglutination. So the principle is still passive agglutination. Why? Because your sheep RBCs, they are coated with the antigens that are not normally found, di ba? Uh, that they are, the antigens that are not naturally found on the sheep RBCs. So the sheep RBCs with the different antigens, they are mixed now with the patient serum, which contains the different antibodies. And once na a specific antibody dito, there is now visible heme agglutination. So by the name itself, ayan, so various antibodies plus the different antigens, diba? So each antibody, of course, they have their own specific antigen put na na to sa sheep RBCs. So if they are specific to one another, they then react and then magbridge sila to form now a, an agglutination or visible heme agglutination. Now, this test, usually, dili ka ingon kung unsa na antibodies na ah. As long as, <laughs> uh, it detects lang if you have one or more of the antibodies there. But if you test also ASO and anti-DNASB, so if mo positive po siya sa ASO, niya positive po diri, it indicates good na na siya ASO, alright? And if mo test mo kag anti-DNASB and this also, then of course, you're also detecting anti-DNASB. But again, dili siya maka-specify kung unsa na antibodies na ah. It only tests if you have one or more no, of the antibodies, katong dimension ganina, kinsa itong mga antibodies uh, ang na ah, sa imuhang sample. Alright? Okay. And that's the end of our Streptococcus pyogenes serology. No? So medyo straightforward, medyo gamay, gamay na, na din ang mga tests. And medyo, di mo po kayo complicated ang principles. So, I hope <laughs> na gets lang. Alright? So, medyo ano mo ko sa baw ko ron, guys, no? So, but I hope, I hope lang yun na na-explain na po na ko tarong. Alright? So, that's all again for Streptococcus pyogenes serology, our first um, application of our serological principles in the diagnosis of a disease. Okay? And this, in this lecture, we focus on the infections caused by Streptococcus pyogenes, di ba? The group A strep. Alright. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to chat me uh, or chat at GC. Don't be shy, as mentioned. Okay? And thank you so much for watching and for listening. No? So have a great day, dears, and keep safe. And I'll see you on our next pre-recorded lecture. Okay. <laughs>